Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this uh, DXF file that they're going to try to cut out on Plasma Cutter. And this is like the original logo, and it's got a lot more detail. Um, don't really understand um, this, uh, whatever it is. It's a uh, headstones or, I mean, anyway. Uh, but I just, I started thinking about this is uh, pretty good. This is a color picture. So this DXF that he's got is 28 inches tall. If we take this with a ratio lock and made it 28 inches tall, it's almost identical. We got 26.83 and we have 26.85. So it's almost identical. So what's good about this this, I need to group this together for a second, control G and group it together. And then hit P and P again. And he's actually got some stuff in here that's not in the original logo. Uh, he put in some graphics and you can see the, uh, he is using a stencil type font and it's pretty close, but he was, I'm more concerned about the banner and like the lily and there's some parts so what I would do in this case, I'd change my nudge factor to, to uh, 30 inches. And I would nudge one of them out of the way. And then I would just draw off this one and put it over there. Like you can't you can't see the, the jacket on the, the gentleman. The flower's not there. Um, you know, you can't really tell it's a headstone. I really looked at, he's done a pretty good job of making the eyes not fall out. So this piece is going to fall out, but the other pieces are connected. I might even connect that piece right there for the one I'm doing it for. But what I would suggest is get some of these details from this one. And since we got our nudge factor set, we're going to use the two point line and let's zoom in here pretty close, get the two point line and just redraw this graphic a lot i'm doing is just holding down the mouse letting the mouse go clicking it that's a pretty sharp point for a plasma cutter but it might work so now you have that we can nudge that over now now it's on our new graphic about in the exact same spot and then i would just do some of the other graphic i'd maybe take the two the three point line to make these curved lines three point lines a little bit more trickier or the three point curve line because you actually have to double click on it or click on it kind of stop the so you so it know you're setting it but we are going to get some little bit of a curve to it and then when you get it just snap it to it now we have all that we can move that out to the other one let's do one more before we even go look and if it's not in the exact right spot, you can make it in the right spot in a second. Now I'm just going to nudge those out of the way and let's go look. So it's kind of making it look like a turn, but we can do more. And I am not a graphic artist, but I could, especially with a plasma cutter, you could take just single lines and not cut all the way, you know, from end to end. So let's just take our three point line and, and do our three point curve line and go from like right here to right here, set it and then move it over. And then I would put in these other graphics that aren't in there. And you could possibly just put in a line. See, that's just a line and it's not in exactly in the right position, but now we can grab our shape tool and just kind of make it, we're trying to make it look like it's a, a scroll. And then I would actually take another two, two point line and just go from here to here uh, somewhere. Now, if you ever get a line like that, you can always take your shape tool and move it. Now, the only thing bad about this, we're gonna intersect these two new graphics, but it's gonna be your, he actually said it doesn't have to look exactly. So I'd put that off that line. So what's going to happen, that's going to cut out. And this line is just going to cut. It's just going to be a cut line. And it kind of makes it look like a scroll. And then over the whole thing, you're going to have to really look. Uh, we'll have to ungroup it. 
I selected it, group and ungroup so the shape tool will work. And you could get X7 or above and, and use a smoothing tool to smooth out that banner. And then like right there, I could just see it. It's a bad spot. It's actually, we might be able to just take the virtual segment delete key and delete that. Now you do not want, let's take the shape tool. You do not want, you can just take that note. You don't really want that sharp of a turn, but I'm not really worried about it right now. We could take away a few of those nodes. And then you just have to go over the whole thing. That does look better. You know, you could adjust the, and then do the same thing to the other side. Uh, like I said on his eye, um, this piece of metal is just going to be hanging in there. Where this has two, two supports, this only had one. I would take my shape tool again and grab, let's zoom in here. See, there's a lot of nodes, a lot of nodes for a plasma cutter. Let's delete those. Let's delete a few more while we're here. And we're not changing the shape of anything. But then what I do is I take this and kind of expand it out and then take your virtual segment delete key and delete those lines. That way the metal is going to be a little bit stronger there. And you're just going to have to go over this, the whole logo. You know, like there's a line right there we don't have. We can draw that line. And since we're still where we were, Well, I didn't, I must've got the two point line. Let's get, get, let's get the three point curve line and draw that little bit of a curve. I like that he's using a stencil font. And in plasma cutting, uh, that'll just be a cut line. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, two lines, but if it's in the way, you know, we could grab the RS, RIP and put it over there a little bit. Uh, and then the only other thing I'd work on is jacket. You know, the the, the axe or whatever looks good. Uh, you could draw the lines of the jacket. And if this has no interest to you, just stop watching. I'm just trying to help one guy. So I'm gonna use the three point curve line to make his jacket real quick. I'm letting it touch the other lines, but when we move it over, it might not be touching. I'm gonna call that good for the video and nudge it over. So that's gonna kind of give the appearance of his jacket. And you could always play around with that and you know bring that out, um, you know, so it doesn't and maybe readjust. See, that's those that's not even the drawing. There's stripes in the drawing. But that that's okay. Um, like this little thing right here is not in the new drawing. It's very easily drawn, especially with the three-point curve line. Just start right there, go to the bottom. Then, then click on it, go up here, and you can actually go past and then come back and go up here. Pretty easy to draw this type of shape. And I'm gonna call that good enough. I don't know if it's gonna leak or not, but we're gonna nudge it over and nudge the other part over and you get a pretty good shape of a button loop or whatever it is. So we're not even close, but take the shape tool that would definitely leak right there. Take the shape tool and join those two nodes and maybe even bring this one in and then use the virtual segment delete key to delete that. I would really think that's not gonna leak, but let's put a box around it just in case. Use the smart fill tool to fill that in. It doesn't leak, so I'm gonna nudge it over the other direction and then I can delete all this stuff I've drawn. Make sure you get them all. And then I'm gonna left click, right click, and nudge that buttonhole or whatever it is back into the picture. And if you did that and did his, maybe his sleeves, um, I, I don't even know if I'm helping this person, but I'm trying. Uh, then just take you some two point lines and three point lines or three point curve line and give him his, something in his hand to make it look more like a hand. So all I'm doing is drawing a line and then I'm uh, let, using the left arrow key. And you could make these lines a little double lines and thicker. You know, I've got the two point line again. I need the three point curve line to do what I wanna do. Just go from there to there, snap on it. And then all I'm doing is hitting the left arrow key. 
once I get it set, I click off of it. Well, I didn't do a very good job on curving that one. But then you go over to his hand and just look at it. And we're not close on some of them, maybe. But we're good enough. And I, I missed one of them totally. But you could, you know, take the pick tool and pick it. And then you, then you can really see the other line. And if you don't want to, you just hit the plus key on the keyboard and bring another line in and actually rotate a little bit like we're off on that line. And I would do a, a lot more detailed work. But like right here on his knuckle of his hand, there's a lot of nodes right there. I mean, that this is going to be a really good point to select all these and go up here and type in the number 20. And look, we've got at the bottom of the screen, we've got 140 nodes. And I'm going to hit enter. Now there's only 18 nodes in a plasma cutter. That's a big deal. But then I would still go by and, um, you know, move some of these around and make them not quite so sharp, especially in a finger type deal. Like there's two nodes right there. It doesn't need to be two nodes. We can delete one and use the tool to bring that back in and, you know, make it where it's not quite so sharp. Same thing on all the fingers. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I just realized I'm, I'm messing up here because if you cut this, that's going to fall out. So his knuckles aren't going to work. So we need to do something to have this not cut out. Um, several things you could do. Tell you what, let's nudge that out of the way. Um, there's that hand. We don't need that one bar. Um, what I would do maybe in this case is go to effects and contour. Contour just point one and see what it is. That looks pretty good. Uh, go up. To, let's actually contour to the outside. Point one. And then break this contour apart. Go up to object and break contour apart. And then I would I would put some lines in here so it will not cut out. You know, and, and uh, make you a elongated rectangle. Uh, rotate it. Put it there. Put the plus key, put it there. And then instead of doing anything else, all you have to do is take the smart fill tool and fill that in and move it out of the way. And fill that in and move it out of the way. And then that's what you're going to get. So now we're going to, let's zoom in here. That will not cut out. I mean, that'll cut out. It still needs some work, but I'm going to left click, right click, and you'll be able to see if, if this was the piece of metal and you, now if we smart fill it, let's use something other than yellow. Let's use black. Uh, the white is what's going to be the metal. So it's going to stay in there. The, the black's going to fall out. No, the black is, the, the white is going to fall. The black is going to stay. So those cuts we had in there earlier, are going to work. So then just take this back and nudge it back over twice. And let's look, make sure we didn't mess up. We messed up a little bit. So the interior cuts are going to work. Uh, take your shape tool and grab the bottom of that ax or whatever it is. We need to fix it anyway. And just bring it up out of the way. So now the, the, the metal is going to go around and in through here. Of course, you'd want to remove this finger joint. And that's just adding a little detail. And then, of course, you know, there's a lot of nodes still. Uh, you could delete those two nodes. Uh, one guy asked me one time why I care about deleting nodes. Well, a plasma cutter goes from node to node, and it's going to burn the metal a little bit hotter for just a millisecond. But there's a lot less nodes, and you still got it worked out. And, you know, I would really look at your text. Text looks pretty good. But there's, look at how many nodes. There are 115 nodes on that little part of the R. Type in the number 20 here and hit enter. And now you've got seven nodes. And I guarantee the R looks almost the same. A little bit different. You know, pick with the, select it with the, see, it's got all the nodes it's got to have. This has, 
Let's see how many nodes it has when you select it. 61 nodes, type in 20. Now you have five nodes. Now it did change it up a little bit, but you can fix that. Now it's, it's a shame you're gonna have to fix it for every letter. But if you cut out something little like that, I don't know how big it's gonna be, but that's, that's only an inch tall. If you put that many nodes, it's going to drive your machine nuts. Let's type in 20. I don't know where I ever came up with 20. It's just a magical number. Um, and see, nothing is grayed out right now because we don't have them selected. So just select them all and type 20. And if you did that, no, no other thing I would really look at is this mustache. And, you know, you might just do the exact same thing to that. And then after you're through, you know, we're good there. I might move that out of the way a little bit more. And it's got way too many nodes. You know, you can select with the, all of them with the node to uh, the shape tool and do that. It's going to be a lot of work as I told him the first time I ever looked at it, but it could be done. That doesn't look half bad. Kind of gives it a curved effect. So for the one I'm doing it for, I hope that helped a little bit. And I don't really, you know, the loop of his, you know, the lapel of his jacket's missing. If you just did single cuts like I did for the jacket, and, you know, I think I missed this. I'm going to do one more and I'm going to quit. I don't like my videos being this long. Uh, this Well, I didn't move it. I drew the line, but I didn't move it. Now, if it gets in the way of that other part, see, I don't even know what that other part is. It's not in the original drawing. So you could either delete it or move that out. Look at the nodes in that. I mean, that, let alone right there, 113 nodes, 20. Now you got six nodes. Spin it around it up there out of the way so it won't interfere with this other line to make it and then I would make these two lines kind of not meet but at least look like they're going to join you know once you get something like this you can use the shape tool and you could always use an imaginary line across there and kind of give them an eye effect of a jacket I would definitely put the lapel in there um you know, I like, you know, instead of putting all these cuts, just these graphics, uh, I might put a, a line like I did here around this side. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.